addition to city agenda. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Reverend? Good evening. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you for bringing us through a very hard winter and bringing us safely to the beginning of spring. We give you the thanks and the praise and the glory. Father, we ask a blessing on our mayor, uh, council, city employees, everyone here in our city, everyone who's associated with this city. Father, we ask that you continue to bless us and keep us safe and watch over us. Uh, we ask tonight, Father, that you bless this meeting, that every word that's said uh, may come from you and go to your people and return to you. Keep us in your perfect will, this we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, additions to the agenda. Um, looks like we are adding two executive sessions under Mel. Non-electric personnel, yes. and a bid opening for contract mowing. Would that also be under you? Yes. Okay. Are there any other additions to the agenda? Okay. For a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. So moved. All in favor? Opposed. Motion carries by vote. Citizens' comments. Adams, Brown, Baron, and Ball. page one through three and um, even though it's a three-page report the actual opinion can be found on page two in the third paragraph down um, you issue your financial statements on a regulatory basis and not a gap basis which you guys always um, get a gap waiver approved and so it allows you this form of presentation and so the third paragraph down says, in our opinion, the financial statement referred to above presents fairly in all material respects the aggregate cash and unencumbered cash balance of the City of St. John as of December 31st, 2013, and the aggregate receipts and expenditures for the year that ended in accordance with the Kansas Municipal Audit Guide, Audit and Accounting Guide. And basically, again, you're in accordance with a um, regulatory basis. Um, which majority of our small cities report on this type of basis of accounting. Um, we basically say it's an unqualified opinion, which is the highest form of opinion we can give on a set of financial statements. Your actual financial statement that we're referring to our opinion on is page four. And this is a summary statement of receipts, expenditures, and unencumbered cash. It basically shows all of your funds that the city has. It shows your beginning unencumbered cash, prior year canceled encumbrances, receipts, expenditures, your ending unencumbered cash balances, any accounts payable or encumbrances that you've incurred by year end, and then your actual cash balance. Basically the difference between your actual cash balance and your unencumbered cash are those items that you have not paid out for in cash at the end of the year. Um, our ending unencumbered cash balance decreased from last year by about 264000 However, even though you decreased your cash balance, you grew your reserve funds by about 148000 Mostly your decrease in cash came in your water and light fund this year, which you're, <coughs> none of you are surprised by. Okay. So like I said, even though your cash overall cash decreased, uh, it's good that the city was still able to put money away into those reserve funds that are building and setting aside monies so that your utility funds can operate in the future if you run into other issues. 
over the next several pages, and if you have any questions, just go ahead and stop me, and you don't have to wait till the end. Uh, the next several pages are just the footnotes to the financial statements that just give some more information about the dollar amounts in the financial statement. I would, however, like you to go to page 13. I always like to point out um, the debt schedule. Basically, we ended the year with $1,671,827 in debt. Uh, we paid $17,365 in interest. And then the following page basically shows that debt, debt and the payment reschedule, payment schedule. So you're, what you're going to pay in the next five years and then in five year increments after that. I think, according to the debt schedule, the last debt payment is scheduled to be paid, and that's on the nitro removal plant, is in 2033. Several of the other ones will mature a lot faster. This year, because you spent more than 500000 in federal funds, you were required to have what we call, in our terms, a single audit. And because of that, we had to issue some special reports, and we had to do more work in regards to the nitrate removal plant and the expenditures revolving around that. The first report is on page 15 and 16. And basically, that's a report on internal control over financial reporting and compliance. Um, we do have to show a violation in that report, but it's it's nothing that you've not heard before, basically. Uh, it's, it's at the last paragraph on page 15. We have a significant deficiency in internal control, and I guess you've heard this already. It's because of the lack of segregation of duties, because we have such a small accounting department that we cannot adequately segregate our duties in the accounting department. So we did have to cite that in the report. Um, however, like I said, that's pretty normal for the size of this city. The next report is on page 17 and 18, and to me this is a little bit more significant. It's the report on compliance over each major federal program that we had to audit. And we had to audit the nitrate removal plant. And basically we're giving uh, an unqualified opinion on the internal control over compliance on there because we had no findings. We didn't have any expenditures that we questioned that were paid with federal funds. So um, again, that's good news because the city was in compliance with all of their requirements in regards to that federal program. If you want to turn to page um, 19, these are basically <coughs> supplementary Schedules. It's the schedule of summary of expenditures, actual and budget. It takes all your budgeted funds and it compares their actual expenses against the budget. And if you look at the far right hand column, it says variance over or under. We were under budget on all of our funds. So the, the city is doing a good job of watching their expenditures and making sure they don't exceed their budget for their fund. Um, the next several uh, pages, I'm not going to go over in detail, but they're the individual fund uh, summary pages. Just gives a little more information about each fund and their receipts and their expenditures. Uh, if anybody has any specific questions, I can try to answer them. Um, but generally, we don't really cover them in much detail. The next page that I'd like you to go to is page 44. This again is another um, statement or schedule that we had to include because you did a, had a single audit this year. We have to report our findings to uh, the federal government and basically this is called a schedule of findings and questions costs and this is where we had to note the significant deficiency in internal control over the financial statement basically the segregation of duties. So that's where that reference to that report is being reported. Okay, and that was the only thing we had to report. On page 46, this is a schedule of expenditures of federal awards. This lists out 
all of your federal expenditures during 2013. You could see the majority of them were from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, uh, $2 million for 17072 and that's why we had the single audit, because <laughs> you were exceeding that by I mean, several million compared to the 500000 Okay. Anybody have any questions on the actual financial statements, the single audit reports? All in all, like I said, because of the, the single audit, it was great that we didn't have any findings that we had to report to the federal government. And you had a, a, basically a clean or an unqualified opinion on the financial statements. We do issue what we call a governance letter. It's a separate, and it's the stapled report, along with looking at the the financial information of the city. We go through a lot of controls, we interview their processes and walk through them and make any recommendations that we think could help improve the city. Um, I would like you to go to, to page three. Um, we had a couple of new ones on the back page there that um, we just kind of want to review. The second one under safeguarding computer systems and files um, even though you do routine backups, uh, we, we do feel that it, periodically those backups should be tested because if, if the backups are not any good, it doesn't matter if you've done a backup if you can't retrieve the data and use it. So we do recommend that periodically those are looked at to make sure that your data is secured and you would be able to use that again. Under meter deposits, uh, we suggest the city update its meter deposit listing Excel spreadsheet so that it ties to the meter de deposit fund balance, the cash balance in that fund. Um, we also suggest the meter deposit listing be printed at the end of every year to reflect the year-end balance. Um, currently, the city just keeps a running total on the spreadsheet, and we've had a little discrepancy between what's in the actual fund as far as cash versus what's on the spreadsheet. Under accounts receivable, um, we just recommend that delinquent accounts need to be set off to state set off program as soon as possible in order to increase the city's chances of collection. Usually we recommend at the end of the year or right after the first of the year because that's when people would be starting to get their tax refunds and that money would be available then for collection. Um, also a proper policy should be established and followed for reviewing and writing off delinquent accounts just so that we're making sure we get off, um, get those old accounts written off that you've exhausted the ways that you can collect and they're just taking up space on the books then. Uh, the Section 125 fund, uh, we just recommend looking at this and uh, John is in the process of this right now to make sure that the cash balance in there doesn't actually, some of that doesn't actually belong to the city, that it is truly um, the employees' monies. Um, it hasn't changed much, which John explained that originally the city put in $5,000 into that fund as kind of a, a cushion so that if monies had to be used to pay for those employee disbursements, then that money was there so they didn't have to keep transferring money in and out of there. Um, but we feel that maybe a closer look ought to be made to that to see if some of those monies aren't owed back to the city, but, and John is in the process of looking at that. Under the petty cash, this is also, I think, been taken care of. The petty cash account should be set up within the CIC accounting software to track the activity and utilize the bank reconciliation feature. In order for the software to work properly, the petty cash account should be moved to the same bank as the general operating account, so transfers to replenish the account can occur. It was just a lot easier to have the petty cash account in the same bank account as you're operating so the transfers could be made in the accounting software so much easier than trying to actually cut a check and recording it and that type of thing. So, And like I said, I think John has already taken care of the petty cash issue. Um, these are just our recommendations. Um, it's up to the city to decide whether or not they want to act upon them. Um, I, have to I have to commend the, the staff here because they always do a wonderful job and taking our recommendations seriously and trying to do everything 
that we do recommend. So I appreciate that. Does anyone have any questions? How much did your fee go up this year? I think the single audit part was four thousand dollars. What was it last year? Do you remember, Vicki? Um, it was our standard. I mean, we just increased it by the amount of the single audit. And next year, if you don't have a single audit, you won't have the four thousand uh, dollar fee attached to it. It just requires an extra lot of testing and reporting, and <laughs> and that's by statute. And right? it, I mean, you're yeah. required to have that. I mean, there's several like I don't know how many compliance requirements we have to look at. So we have to do time. that until we get down below five hundred thousand in federal expenditures. Good news, um, they have increased it to seven hundred and fifty thousand, but it's not effective until audits that start one one and fifteen. So, we're, and we're hoping that they even increase well, that higher. We won't have a problem with that it further because we are not oh, receiving federal funds. Federal funds, oh, yeah. right? So just, so just the one, the one year, oh, yeah. as long as you don't do another, another project, and do another or, project, right? So for this project, the single audit for this year or for last year oh, okay. sh should be done. Okay. If we had um, findings, we will be required to follow up on them next year, even though we did, don't have a single audit, but we don't have any findings, so there's really nothing to follow up on either. And what does the regular audit run? Um, have I'd have to look again. Do you, do I don't you know off the top of my head either. I think I'm, I don't know. I can sure. get that at some point for you here tonight. Because I've got, the, got it in the file in there. Anything else? Like I said, if you think of something, and you just let Jonna know, and she can contact me, and I can get back to you. I appreciate your time and effort on Thank that. You. Thank you. I appreciate the staff. They're very easy to work with. So we need a motion, though, to accept that, right? Because we, and then just then as a side note, I have to send it to the Federal Audit Clearinghouse once it's accepted, and there's a lot of other paperwork that's involved with getting that done, too, so. Make a motion to accept the audit. Nice student. Sorry. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. We'll get those letters and stuff too. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, um, item number two, CIP received an email from the CIP committee, which I'm hoping is a copy of in here. Basically, they're notifying us that they will no longer be um, handling the Easter egg hunt or anything at Christmas time. So they're hoping that somebody may say step up and take it over, but they're focusing in other directions at this time. So um, we do have someone who is willing to take on the Easter egg hunt. I'm hoping that she has gotten in touch with some of the CIP members. Cindy Crockett is looking to take it on. So um, I told her that I would let CIP know that she's interested in taking that on and to see if they could be of any assistance to her. Um, as far as Christmas, I'm not sure what the past procedures have been. I don't know that it's something that city staff needs to try and take on. So. Hasn't that been the lighting around the square before? Excuse me? Hasn't that been the lighting in the sack around the square? It, it's been various different things. It became much more um, involved with Main Street was active and they did lots of activities. Um, once Main Street turned into CIP, you know, there's just not as many people, volunteers, working it and stuff. And I think it's just become whatever it 
whatever people can do, you know, to pull something <coughs> together. Well, one of the things that happened with CIP was that everyone involved in the CIP got burned out because it was just the same three people constantly doing it. You, everyone wants to have all of these things, but nobody's willing to come over and help. So it became a, I went as long as I could with it. So right. You get burned out after a while. So. Prior to that, you know, I think, you know, we always had, and correct me if I'm wrong, you guys that have lived here, but we've had, um, you know, the odd fellows always like to do their candy bags and stuff and um, like to have Santa come and visit. And anything after that kind of has been whatever groups wanted to do. But those, those things have stayed consistent, would you say? So, and so if the Odd Fellows want to continue to do that, I'm mm -hmm. sure that they can coordinate with the library or whoever mm -hmm. to get that set up so they have some place to do it. I mean, I think we still want to light the square and, okay. you know, as far as the lighting is concerned. We just don't have the ceremony do and we don't have the, um, what are those? Luminaries. Luminaries, yeah. The other thing I would like to see happen this year is get the nativity refreshed and get it out again. So, is, this, is the school still interested in doing that? Or had somebody volunteered to do that? Or? Sherry and I have. Oh, okay. Mary, good. <laughs> and then, and then, uh, but Mary we'll, needs some help, so, right? Yeah. We'll work on it this summer. Try to anyway. Let me know. I think oh, I could get maybe to get Lynn Schultz to help us. Okay. Amy. Okay, yeah, we can see about that. And they collect some donations. Well, would be more than happy to help, too. Okay. Uh, and I'm sure Troy would be happy oh, to help, yeah, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, consent agenda. We need to approve the minutes for the regular meeting of March 4th, 2014. Approve appropriation ordinance 03 18 2014 in the amount of $764,424.57 and approve the request for Cindy Friesen to teach an archery unit in the city limits during April. So moved. Second. Is there any further discussion or comments? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries by vote. thought we'd already passed that. We asked her to bring it back each each, each time that oh, she does it. Okay. She did one in the fall, and now she's going to do another one for the okay. spring. She does the same thing with the swimming pool and the skating rink. No. Okay. Uh, as far as what I had uh, on the superintendent's report, just information, uh, citywide cleanup, clean actually countywide cleanup, uh, is going to be starting March 31st, and the city's well in April 4th, but the county goes until the Saturday, which would be the fifth. So, all material needs to be curbside. Have the piles separate. Uh, the city we've got little flyers up here that tells what materials we will and won't pick up. We won't pick up any hazardous material, tires, car batteries, paint, or any e-waste. We'll is the county going to have that. The county has that. We will pick up microwaves and, you know, uh, white appliances, you know, anything. If it has free on it, needs to be removed. Uh, pick up lumber, construction material, concrete, brick, old furniture, uh, carpet. But the main thing is just to have, have the piles separate. If, if there, just everything's, we've seen it every year, people just decide they're going to clean out the garage and it's in one big pile and we will not sort through it. So. Just appreciating any cooperation we could get on that. So, and they are going to have the uh, household uh, hazardous waste some some of the time this spring. I don't know if they decided on the date, but Darren Reed did tell me they were going to do it this spring. Okay, so they will have it during this time. He, yeah. did, he didn't didn't give me a date when I talked to him. Okay. So it's, they'll probably put something in the paper, and he may have, since I talked to him, came up with a date to do it. But, you know, so. okay. uh, Another item is that uh, back during when we had the, the long, cold, slow thaw, the uh, had a big ice buildup on the roof over here where the drain pipe comes down and it filled up an area. We went and looked at it after it thawed out trying to find out but we had a leak in the roof somewhere. 
the guys would have inspected it and put some blackjack on it. But anyway, in the meantime, it leaked into the John's office and through the upstairs. Through the upstairs, came down through here and went down that wall there and uh, called the insurance company up just to see what it would take. And we've got a thousand dollar deductible, and the whole to do the complete uh, repair is uh, uh, be fourteen hundred and thirty seven dollars and seventy five cents. So if we want to go ahead and do that, you know, we pay the thousand and they'll, they'll give us a check for the four hundred thirty seven seventy five. So. Uh, is it even worth putting that on the insurance? Well, to have I mean, a claim for four hundred dollars, it's up to you guys. That's why I'm bringing it to you. <coughs> what does fourteen hundred dollars get you? It repanels that whole room. The, the the wall in there is buckled and. Oh, you think the roof, the leaks are fixed? The guys, honestly, they said we could not find anything super obvious. You know, when it rains, we've never right. seen that before. But the the downspout gutter froze up, and so it built up. You know, big pile of slush. So uh, they went up after everything. Thought and said, "Man, we were, you know, they smeared some stuff around, but they didn't say, okay, you know, here it is.' So, mm -hmm. but yeah, I'd hate for it to happen again. But I wouldn't do anything to have it fixed. Well, yeah. you know, we could have somebody else look at it, but the guys uh, went up and looked at it and just, you know, could you? I mean, could you plug off the rain gutter and fill it with water? And you know, we could, we could try and make it leak again. I guess. I mean, yeah, we. Could, I mean, I guess we could do that, or uh, you know, this see if we can find. This would be office first. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. John had you know some stuff to get wet, and like I say, it, it, the reason it went up here because it got on the floor up there and ran across the floor and came down into the ceiling. So <coughs> we ought to find the leak before we spend any money fixing it. Oh, I would agree with that, and so I mean, we can have we some. You know, there's a leak. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to see it rain, but. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and like I say, they found some spots that was a little bit, you know, iffy, but they they couldn't say, okay, this is where the water came in. So that's mm -hmm. that's that's a point taken. But you know, uh, that downspout is built into the building. No, it it's a, it's just got a you know, there's a flat area up there, and the water comes to the edge, and then it goes yeah. down the outside of the building, and then it just where it goes out underneath the sidewalk and onto the gutter. It's really kind of undersized, but anytime you get something that's Freezing and thawing, you know, just like water running down the gutter, it thaws out during the day and then it starts freezing, and it was just. Uh, uh, it's Justin, like it kind of backed up. Yeah, Justin went up there and, you know, with a crowbar and knocked a hole in the ice so it would, we started getting rid of the water up there. But, so. Well, if you, you say it come into here, upstairs? Yeah, upstairs. Chances are the leaks higher up the roof. Well, yeah, we we know that. We we went right above where the water came in, but I'm saying there's no no spot that says you know this is this, this is it. Just some kind of well, we put some blackjack on it, kind of look iffy, but not a defending thing. And we can look at. I can probably have somebody that you know. I mean, we've all got eyes we can see, but maybe a professional, or somebody that does a lot of roofing might see something that we're we're missing. So, and you know, the thing about a leak on a roof, it can be quite a ways away sometimes. You know, it could have been back over here and run down the rafter and you know. When's the last time they had a roof put on? Oh that, what was that? One hailstorm, I don't know how many years ago well, it was. Still on time. But there's a it's a there's a flat area up there and we can recoat that with that aluminum, you know, to help cut make it nice a little longer. But we'll look at it, but I am in agreement what we can get that looked at, but I didn't know if we wanted to and we don't have to, you know, we can Putting some new ceiling tile in, but I know there's concern. You know, water gets behind the, you know, paneling. We're going to get some mold going or whatever. So yeah. it, it's up to what do you guys think. So or we can pay for it all ourselves and not be more. Yes, I don't know how the insurance works here, but I know for four hundred dollars I wouldn't turn it into mine. Well, and one thought, you know, it you couldn't match that paneling anywhere else. That's why the insurance would pay to do the whole room. If if we just took the paneling off the one wall that got wet. And put sheetrock up or something. Don't try to match the paneling because I don't think that'll ever happen. I mean, that could be a possibility. But um, main thing is they know that we have the situation, and if we do come up with an old issue, I guess if we don't do something about it, does that will we be able to claim if there's mold? I don't think so because it would be a separate issue. 
I don't know for sure. But I don't know, but we need to get a roof fix for right. anything. Yeah. And I think we need to get a professional roofer in to take a look at it. Okay. Then the liability is on somebody besides you. Uh, well, somebody's got to get the blame. <laughs> This is the uh, contract we're going to bid. BNJ uh, Mowing bid for the contract, $60 an hour. Um, commitment is to pick up all trash, trim bushes and trees, weedy, and mow. And they carry the allotted liability insurance. Since that is the only bid we received, um, I would look for a motion to approve the NJ mowing for the 2014 mowing season. So moved. Second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. Okay. Next item I had uh, be requesting the exec safety session on a person who possible hire to include all the council, myself and the mayor. Okay, how long? Oh, oh five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. <laughs> Let's try it. <laughs> I'm not going to go away. Five so, minutes. Five minutes. So moved. Second. All in favor? Uh, Opposed. Motion carries. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries by vote. I heard the And her start date? Will start date will be May 12th. Session for non elected personnel, possible hire uh, myself, council, mayor, and uh, Scoop, Sherry Williamson, possible conflict for five minutes. Okay. Oh, hang on. Wait, wait. Motion. Oh. Motion. So moved. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Motion right. carries. Second. Mark, please back in the session. Thank you, Motion. How are you? Jeff Williamson, $20 an hour. Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries four with one abstention. Four with one abstention. Okay. <coughs> That's no. all I had. That's all you had? Okay. All right. Chief? The only thing I have is open burn from the 19th of this month to the 21st of next month. from April 19th through May 21st, um, we, pursuant to provision uh, of the code of the city of St. John County. No, he said, he said this can, month, 19th yeah, March, March 19th. Oh, through I'm sorry. Through you can just ask for a motion to approve this mayor's proclamation. Okay. Or open burn. That says March 19th, 2013. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Oh, it does. Thanks for proofreading. Which Sunday is Easter? Yeah. I'll make a motion to the mayor's proclamation with the correction in the date. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5-0. That's all I have. Mike, would you fortunate to have to go over Stafford? Yes. Do we have quite a few farm and schools there or what? Three. Three. 
Probably most of them were estate, correct? Huh? Most of them were probably estate. Um, no. no. We didn't have too many people go to stay. I mean, I don't think anybody that I can think of firefighter-wise went to stay. Law for me. No. I don't think he was a How state. long did that deal last over there? Uh, we got home about 5.30. Pretty hot, wasn't it? Yep. Was it uh, accidental or intentional? Mm, there's a, they're saying it's probably arson, but <clears throat> like, shame. I haven't heard for sure. Mm -hmm. My first thought was a meth lab up there. It'd be well hidden. They might find bodies if they go to looking. All right, John. Um, other than the audit report, and I just got back from Kirk's conference last week, and all of our sessions were good sessions, things that we could, um, that I can use, you know that was pertinent to our size city. Basically one was a little bit not so much, but it let me know that that wasn't something we would do. So I guess it, it was something, but um, I'll have some things along the way um, to maybe share with you guys to see if we can <coughs> improve things. New business. Cami, a board of director, Number two, an alternate. I'd make a motion to leave it the way it is. Sure. All in favor? Motion carries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 4-1. <coughs> You're pretty quick on the draw there, Bob. I know what happened last time. <coughs> you know, I didn't get to ask for further discussion. <laughs> Okay, Whit Center. I'm sure you all changed your mind. Whit Center and City Office Planning Contract Renewal. Are you doing a good job? Yeah. Why change yeah. it? Is it something that we um, typically put out? No. no. Since I've been here, we've had two different ones, um, and it's because the other one retired. So. Um, and, you know, that's kind of nice because, you know, there are things, you know, that files and so forth, mm -hmm. so it's good yeah. confidentiality that we don't have. Not a lot of turnover in the position. Okay. Then I would look for an motion to approve Schultz Cleaning Service for the next year for both the Witt Center and City Hall. So moved. Second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 5 0. Okay, first group insurance, Kent Anthony. John had got an email, and I don't know if any of you have had any conversation with regards to this with anybody, but. Um, Mr. Anthony is um, asking that we split the accounts between himself and um, Ag360, putting the business package with one company and the boiler package with another company. Um, the rationale for that is the fact that, and I'm not sure, John, you're going to need to explain to me how, if, what the connection is there or... Carl Dudry is part owner of... First group insurance. Okay. So that's where he's bringing in. It's somewhat local as well. So. I wasn't aware of that when I voted last week. If I had a been, I would took that under consideration. Okay. And uh, I also found out some information on Ag 360 that I didn't know today. And uh, St. John National Bank is, is is a part owner of that. And so I would like to see the, the numbers <coughs> between the two different uh, injuries. So you mean a bid? Well, they, they would be the same. Same. That's the no, same. What they're talking about split, oh. going with the boiler on one side and, and the. Uh, uh, so you want to know how much it is for each the business package and yeah. how much the boiler is? Yeah. 
for each that agent. information fairly readily available. It might take me a few minutes. Does anyone else have any thoughts on the matter? That won't be within 10 days if we don't do something. We've already <clears throat> moved on it once. Right. It won't be within Camp Anthony's 10 days to protest. Yeah, we'd have to have a special meeting towards the end of this week or the first of now. End of this week. Surely it's the 10 business days. Yeah. Monday through Friday. Like I said, I wish I'd have known this information before this come up. towards whatever activities and so forth are going on in the community and I believe the family's been here a long time. Oh, I just had no I had no idea who he was, that's why I, I'm asking. Yeah, so. I believe the feedlot on the north side of town mm -hmm. is his. Oh okay. And he's, and he's obviously in the insurance. <laughs> and he's done a whole lot of them. Yeah, I mean he's, he's like the fence at the well, He's done just as much yeah. for the community yeah. as anybody yeah. else. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the name was familiar. I just didn't know who he was as all. So. I didn't Thank know. You. I didn't know this. I didn't either. I knew it. I just didn't think it would affect it. Well, it would have made it. It would have affected the mom. Or I've done, Carl Dudley done a lot for me. Right. Yeah, me too. <clears throat> In fact, I, I think I probably worked for Carl when I was 17, 18 years old. Getting close, Jonah. Um, actually, I'm having trouble finding. We've got this huge spreadsheet. How we break everything out, and I was hoping to find that pretty quick. But well, you can probably tell the difference, us. Trey. It's 75, and the difference between the two. Yeah. yeah. The EMC policy is 75. Actually, it's more than that. It's 83, and then the traveler's part is like 25, 25 and some change. But that's close. Okay, See, now you're talking $8,300 for the premium and $2,500 for the premium? No. Okay. 70, 75000 Okay. for the EMC. There's, there's two parts. There's the traveler's, which is the equipment breakdown. Okay. And then there's a commercial output policy that goes with that, with the EMC. Mm -hmm. That goes with the traveler's. That's like $8,700. We just saw it today. So those two would be combined together, but that commercial output policy is on the EMC policy, so I don't think it could be split. So I think it'd be the 75 plus the 8 approximately, the 83, okay. and then the travelers would be the 25 and change. Would be the way you'd have to split it for now, the way it's written out. You, there's no way to split it. Yeah, there's no way to split it and take the 100,000 or whatever it be, roughly, and split it 50-50. Can we rotate years? Is that an option? They said, "Well, enough. We could do you this year. Go back ten minutes." Honestly, year. you guys can do it however you want. Here's our deal: we we're just we're the lo we're local. I understand Carl's local. I'm not taking anything away from that. You guys, we're going to respect your guys' decision, whatever you guys choose to do. If we can't, it doesn't make sense for you guys to have two brokers for your insurance. It doesn't make any sense to split it up. It just really doesn't. So if We've decided if we don't, if you guys don't want us to do the entire package, then we'll just let whoever you have first insurance group do it all. Uh, and that only makes sense from for whoever's doing it, whether it be us or anybody else. It doesn't make sense to have two agents on the on the insurance. 
And, and do you think that Mr. Dudry is actually the employer? Does he actually just own the building? I mean, for his know? business? Yeah. Uh, I honestly don't know, but no. You mean his insurance company? Mm -hmm. I think he just owns. He owns the bank, which I think also might own the insurance company. I'm not 100 percent sure. So how is it with you? I guess Here? See. Yeah. Well, there's part ownership in St. John, obviously, which Bob just alluded to, St. John National Bank. And then there's part ownership in Mound Ridge. But the ownership, which it's all the same, the ownership really doesn't, it doesn't play a huge role, but there is ownership in St. John, and we are local in the county. Our agency is actually in the county. So local dollars, commission, everything is going to be in the county. And we're employing two full-time people that are going to be in the county, too. Okay, now I wasn't at the last meeting, so I'm assuming, which is a dangerous thing, that we, the council voted to move the insurance to Ag 360, is that correct? Yes. Yep. That is correct. So, if I'm understanding you right, we can't vote on this tonight again. Is there a protest, or what are, what are we dealing with here? Right. Someone can move to change it tonight, or we can leave it the same. You would move it. To okay, what was the 10 days that you were talking about? Oh, uh, that Kent had his 10 days to, is that what you call protest? Right, right. basically. He's pro done that. Yeah, it's basically try to convince you to keep his business yeah. as what we, it is. Yes, we just have to make our final decision before April 1st is the deadline on the insurance. Well, you need to give whoever time to put together their package yeah so that we could it's gonna be exactly the same the same dollar amount they were just switching it to there might be a few small changes there's always a few uh, small changes yeah. from year to year yeah mm -hmm. whether it's with them or with kent it's they'll be just because we'll go but no matter who we'd be with it'd be the same changes same, That's same changes right. absolutely so I guess if there is interest in changing the decision from the last meeting, somebody needs to speak up. My opinion is to bring it all to St. John. From just like we voted on the last meeting. I thought maybe there was a way that we could. Well, I wish there was, but I do agree with. I mean, yeah. that I think it ought to be all under one instead of... Oh, I, I think you're right. Because oh. if you start separating something happens somewhere down the line, then you, once again, you get that finger pointing. And I, the history is that it was in town, you know, until um, Phyllis... Stop, stop. No. Hager. Hager. Yeah, had Quivira over here. She bought Faulkner. And then, and she said she'd keep a, a front in town, and then she closed it. And so council looked around and found that, you know, uh, I think Becky Thrasher was on at the time and maybe knew some more about Carl's business and brought that to the table that way. At least that's my recollection. How about you, Mel? Yeah, I agree with that. Then I guess we will move on to the next item. American Red Cross Proclamation. American Red Cross is, this is National Red Cross Month, and be that. Um, March is American Red Cross Month, a special time to recognize and thank our everyday heroes, those who reach out to help their neighbors when they are in need. American Red Cross heroes are on the front lines every day. They volunteer their time, give blood, take life-saving courses, or provide financial donations to help those in need. 
We would like to remember our heroes here in St. John who gives to people in need. They work tirelessly to help in time of disaster when someone needs life-saving blood or the comfort of a helping hand. They provide round-the-clock support to members of the military, veterans, and their families and teach life-saving classes in CPR, aquatic safety, and first aid. Across the country and around the world, the American Red Cross responded to hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, and wildfires, the tragedy at the Boston Marathon, and the typhoon, and I will butcher it, so, <laughs> in the Philippines. When an injured service member ended up in a hospital far from home, the American Red Cross offered comfort. When a hospital patient needed blood, American Red Cross blood donors helped them. When a lifeguard jumped in to save a drowning child or someone stepped up to help a heart attack victim, the American Red Cross was there. We dedicate the month of March to all those who support the American Red Cross mission to prevent and alleviate human suffering in the face of emergencies. Our community depends on the American Red Cross, which relies on donations of time, money, and blood to fulfill its humanitarian mission. Now, therefore, I, Julianne M. Owens, Mayor of St. John, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and laws of St. John and Kansas, do hereby proclaim March 2014 as American Red Cross Month. I encourage all Americans to support this organization and its noble humanitarian mission. Humanitarian mission. Um, and witness thereof, I hear unto set my hand this 18th day of March in the year of our Lord 2014 and of St. John, Kansas. It really doesn't involve. That it think so. So it was okay. just your proclamation. Yes, I just wanted to make sure. All right, old business. Curbside recycling. Meeting before last, those of you that were here, I asked you to talk to people in the community if you had the opportunity to see what the feelings might be on a curbside recycling program. Was anybody, did anybody get the opportunity to do that? I did. Okay. I got, uh, everyone I talked to was pretty positive about it. I didn't get uh, no negative uh, feedback from anyone. So. Even though there would be an increase in the cost? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, and I explained that to them. So. Okay. Anybody else? John is the only one I talked to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, Mr. Welch included in his proposal uh, an option for curbside recycling. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. I hate to correct you, but it's not curbside. Uh, we don't do curbside in these towns because our uh, the big trucks will tear up streets. Okay. Yes. So okay, has, to do single stream other. recycling. Hmm? To do single stream recycling? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. So they so, wouldn't be at each residence then? Well, actually, you get, if you take that last option that I gave, Stafford wants to do it. Uh, I'll, I'll get a bunch of 20 gallon containers. The reason, so people can take them to the to the bins, and, and they just put everything, all the recycle in in that in that can, and the reason for twenty gallons because it will fit in the car seat as well as the pickup. Okay, so basically, then we would be charging an extra amount of money every month to provide a container. Uh, actually, I'm selling the containers. I'll I'll, I'll provide them then. And the citizen will own it. Okay, so that means if I wanted to recycle and I got a container, then when I had it full, I would put the container in my vehicle and go dump it? Yeah. Okay. You're going to, you want to charge them for them driving to dump it? No. I'm just, I'm, just, I'm going to still pick up the trash. I, I'm, there is no charge for those. I do, I do have to charge for the containers. What if you just want to have your own container and take it and dump it? Yeah, you can have your own. Uh, oh, oh, anyway, we, we, we can't do curbside. And, uh, and, and really, to do a whole other route to pick up the recycle, mm -hmm. uh, that gets pretty expensive. And it would have to be done in the alleys again. Uh, and I'm not sure the people, you know, the people in Stafford, they are pretty dedicated recyclers, a lot of them. 
can in daylight to go put it in the bins themselves. And, and really not very many of them wanted curbside <coughs> use to recycle. Uh, I'm trying to do this without raising the rates too high for very long, you know. Okay. It's basically it's basically fifty cents a month for four for four years, that's all we have. So it's fifty cents and a month citizen. for four years to buy the container. Yeah. And in the citizens only. But really, if we're just going to take it, I mean, I could get the size container I think I'm going to use that would hold, say, sure. what I want for a week, yeah. and then I could just go. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm, I'm yeah. not saying you're making it an option. It. We would not force anybody to do that. You know. okay. it's, just, it's just an option. Uh, the, only, the only thing that, that would help me if, if her, if would be to get, get a better price on the containers is all. But if we don't need them, I don't have to buy them either. I just gave that option. You know. Okay. Would it be something that we could let um, Bill know maybe and see if we could put it through a retailer here in town? It's something that, you know, so that you would carry something that people would want to use, then they could just go purchase it if they wanted to. So how is it any different than how it is now? It's not. That's what just, that was my question. It's just Terry would be providing the container. And, and Terry, um, um, I have a question. Now, you said it would tear up the, the streets? Guaranteed. Um, we, can't, uh, we can't put those trucks down near the, near the curb. To, to, to pick up a container? Uh, yeah. I, I just I guess I'm just not following what, what you're saying because I, I don't see the difference between picking up trash and picking up recycled. There's not there's there there is no difference except the recycle has to be picked up would have to, if we did you know a pick a recycle pickup it would have to be in the alleys just as the trash is picked it's the same place where the trash is picked up because those trucks are heavy enough. Uh, even that, even that little fork we have, but they're heavy enough that if we swing over to the curb uh, and uh, and or take a turn near the curb, we'll scuff them streets pretty good. It won't be long before we'll be through them, be through the asphalt on the edge. But you could go down the alley and pick up. Yeah, we could pick it up out of the alley, no problem. But you'd have to run two routes. Yeah, we'd have to. You know, we'd have to. So we'd be looking at, you'd have to rebid it and give us another quote for what it would take to do something like that. Because the quote that you gave us was strictly for you to provide the containers to the citizens. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And uh, actually I was selling them to the citizens. Okay. Right. So I thought by doing the recycling, Terry, correct me if I just got the wrong uh, perception but you, of it. But, I mean, if you'd like if, it, I can, I can, you know, I can get those bins and uh, I mean Mr. Nisley uh, you know he he signed he signed on with Maxwell over here and uh, and the way his rules work uh, it's it's eighteen dollars a month. Why can't we leave, just leave the bins that the county have right now and just keep doing what we're doing for recycling? We can yeah, please do that. It's my theory. Yeah. Yeah, but the, main, and the, main, the main reason I would like to have the recycle bins out here is because every ton I take to recycle saves me $31 at the landfill. Now, Mr. Nisley will find you $10 if you don't recycle. If, uh, I don't know whether that's, I don't know what to say, I think it's him, you know. And the city council, they're made mandatory that they're going to recycle. The, uh, will, will the county allow them dumpsters to stay down there? I think they are. Uh, the recycle them. Yeah, but you got, you got to separate it in everything. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, yeah. I'm going to recycle right. 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 there. Well, I was going <clears> to <throat> try to set one up here in the north part of town and one down somewhere in the south part of town. So people don't have to go far to get to. 
Okay, well, it sounds to me like it's, we it's, need to it's, gather it's, some additional information on what the county's going to do with their facility before we make any decisions for the community. That's probably a good point. I think so. Um, can you get with the appropriate people at the county, Jonna, and find out if they're planning on closing up shop down there at some point in the near future? I just talked to Darren Reed here. Well, that was probably two weeks ago, and, and there's no plans to no plans in the works to to change any of that. So who's gonna? It, will you be in charge of that then, or is the county? The ones down there at the county? Uh -huh. uh, no. Uh, although uh, one of the commissioners asked me if I'd just like to take over the whole wheels, the whole recycle thing. The main reason is because it's it's a little bit much all of it for Darren to do by himself, but the county doesn't want to hire him, somebody to help him. Okay, but then that would be something that the county would contract with you to do. That's that, a whole right? yeah. That's a whole different deal. Yeah. Okay. If you could follow up on that point, okay. John, I'd appreciate it. I don't think at this point in time we're willing, and can't correct me if I'm wrong, please, but I don't think we're willing to make a decision to add 50 cents a month to everybody's bill to buy recycling containers. Yeah, well, they did over in Stanford. Uh, uh, I don't know what they're going to do in Hudson with people, people at Seward. Uh, they don't pick on me to provide containers if they, they like the idea of a single stream uh, bins up there. And that says it had some uh, folks at Radium are pretty sure they get filled up with trash. All right. Well, I don't think we're willing to take action at this time on buying containers. Yeah. So. Well, I'll just, you know, I'll just go on. I mean, it, it's, that's not even it. I, it actually did, uh, did Ron ever get that contract back? Yeah. I took it in there at least two weeks ago. Yeah. We're going to be reviewing, doing some review on that here in just a bit. Okay. So. Anyway, it's just basically like the last contract, contract except I had the line that obligates us to, uh, to you know, provide trucks or containers if there's something that's going to generate extra trash. Okay. We, we did it anyway. We're good. Right? Okay, um, item number two under old business, one hour parking at the land and title office. <clears throat> we discussed that last meeting just briefly. We saw no reason to change anything. I did go by there. It is all one hour on the courthouse side. Is that right? Yeah, I'm not sure what it reads. We did take down the, the handicapped okay. parking. Okay. So the sheet or whoever gained the stall there. So. Okay. I can't remember what was she wanting now. She was wanting us to mark it as one hour parking to keep people from parking, parking across the street and parking there all day long. I think she had an RV that was camped there for a day and was creating problems for her clients. So. Is there, since we're one hour on the other side of the street, does it make sense to have both sides of the street be the same? Is there a rationale for just keeping one side of the street? You know, some people may need more than an hour. I mean, whether it's in the Somebody abstract office the or in the courthouse. I mean, I know there's parking, but it would be nice to if you get one hour everywhere. Then, I mean, if everybody goes by the signs, some people you may need two hours to take care of their business, so I, I don't know, but, you know, she indicated that she was going to approach the commissioners again, I think, and I don't know if anybody on the council you talked to them or not. Yeah. 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 So, so then what I'm hearing is that council, we've removed the handicapped parking spot, but we're not willing to turn that side of the street into one hour parking at this time. then I would say we need to send her a letter just letting her know that we we followed up and did remove the handicap parking and that we're not going to be making any other changes at this time. Um, is there anything else? 
since we didn't add the so we didn't add that on the agenda. contract language to the agenda. We can't act on it now, can we? Not really. Um, all right, we'll deal with that. Is there any additional old business? Being none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Yeah, can, move. I, can I make oh. one more comment? Sure. Uh, <clears throat> in order for, for us to go around and, and, and pick up the recycle stuff, mm -hmm. there's going to be a cost of that, too. Right. Uh, but I don't think it would be that. I don't think it would be three dollars like Mr. Meiser charges over there in Maxville. Uh, I think it's something. See, here's here's. Well, if I can pick up a lot of stuff and recycle, it doesn't. The price doesn't have to go up that much. Right, I understand because, what you're because saying. Because I'm going to get rid of the recycle for free. Right. I think and. Somebody in the council, if I'm speaking I'm out of turn, please let thing. me know. But I'm thinking that for the time being, with the contract expiration date coming up fairly quickly, that we need to do a little bit of research over the next year and see if getting a single stream recycling route established is something that the community would be interested in. And then that. we could look at doing it next year. Or any time or you know whenever but when we matter. have more information about what the community wants doesn't want and what the cost is going to be yeah. so terry what's your thought that if you had containers that people would be more likely to recycle than taking it the, re the, the reason to have a specialized well not, not, nothing real special you know but to have a container that's dedicated to recycle you put it you put it in their house you know they'll have it in there and uh, and it will remind them to recycle. Now I can't say that you know uh, if they keep them clean enough. They might be really good beer coolers. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, the idea of having a container is put in house now. You you know if, if everybody would get a container for their recycle, you know, get them. You know these these things. Uh, would be twenty-two dollars a piece, paid out over four years. Uh, and, and after that, we can either pick them up or they can haul them. It's cheaper for them for them if they haul them. So, if we were going to put one at every residence and every business in St. John, how mm -hmm. many containers would you need? Uh, well, at least four hundred. Okay, so then we'd be talking. Said, I think we're going to do some further study on it and see what the community might be. Well, that's just an option, you know. And we don't even predict, you know, as far as I'm concerned, uh, we wouldn't even really need a contract on, you know, on that part. I mean, we could, we could add a little recycler thing, but I mean, we would we would do that. It, it would be to our advantage to. Do that. Right, I understand that. But like I said, I don't think council is willing to move on adding 50 cents a month to anybody's bill until we have a chance to talk to the community. Yeah, yeah. So. I, yeah, I understand. Okay. Uh, I've had people ask me about it at a, at a welding shop. Send them in here yeah. so that they can fill out a service request form and we can start tracking it. But, uh, well, actually, actually, I think probably half of the people have asked me about it are from out of town. <laughs> there you go. All right. I well, would. Staff, Stafford likes the idea. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Is there any further discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.